of this supermoon is Seattle photographer Tim Durkin. Uh, Tim, thanks for being with us. The moon's going to be very big, very bright, very dangerous storms developing tonight. We're to the east of Chicago. So we're going to be watching southern parts of Michigan getting into northeastern uh, Indiana and then the northern half of the state of Ohio. That's our greatest risk zone for severe weather, including hail, once again, and gusty damaging winds. We've got a few warnings out there, and we're watching a few scattered thunderstorms into parts of North Carolina. This is north of Rocky Mount here in uh, South Virginia or Southeast Virginia. We've got Lancaster, Middlesex, North Under Northumberland counties under a severe thunderstorm warning. So we'll watch for some gusty winds out of that one until 515. South of I-70 here in the state of Ohio, headed towards uh, the state line with West Virginia, Muskingum and Noble counties under a severe thunderstorm warning until 530. And we head up into uh, uh, Saukee and Washington counties here in the state of Wisconsin. You guys under a severe thunderstorm warning until 415. So right now, storms are fairly hit or miss, but we know more coverage likely as we head into the mid and late evening, even overnight hours. So we've got a a lot of daytime heating that's been occurring, uh, plenty of moisture, so that fuel is in place for the thunderstorm development. And the fast moving winds aloft will help to enhance that threat that we get in on some damaging winds out of these storms. Severe thunderstorm watch for the areas uh, where we currently have that one warning until 10 o'clock local time. This also extends over Lake Michigan and into parts of Michigan and the state of uh, Indiana or getting close to the state of Indiana, I should say. As we move forward in time, watch the future radar and watch how these storms really begin to uh, take shape as we get into the mid and late evening hours. 10 o'clock, Detroit, you could get, be getting slammed. Northern Indiana as well, moving through a place like Cleveland around midnight, western PA, into West Virginia during the very early morning hours, Maryland as well, and then Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia, right along that 64 corridor for the 6 a.m. hour, eventually uh, losing some of their punch by the time we get to the late morning, but still parts of Virginia, even North Carolina could be seeing some of those late day storms. Flash flooding will be a risk as well, given all the heavy rain that will accompany these storms. So parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania and West Virginia are the areas to watch, especially Mike. Right. See as well as Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, Southern Illinois, and Indiana. And the uh, setup looks the same. There's our uh, system. Those fronts will help to focus and lift the moisture. So we've got our cold front, also our stationary front, those service focusing mechanisms. South of those fronts, we've got warm, moist air in place. And the energy from daytime heating, you get that warmth uh, rising during the day, and we'll get that air rising and fast moving winds aloft still in play. So we'll continue to watch for probably our greatest threat to be those gusty damaging winds. As we go through tomorrow afternoon, you can see a few thunderstorms begin to be scattered about, but a bigger complex back into parts of Missouri and Arkansas. As we move forward and into the overnight, that's when the real area of action will move through uh, uh, middle Tennessee down into parts of northern Mississippi and northern Alabama. And with that line that we're seeing on the future radar, that gives credence to that damaging wind threat. So very likely we're going to be seeing some down trees across uh, this part of the country. Could even see some potent thunderstorms Thursday morning in the Atlanta metro area, Asheville, North Carolina as well. You can see things quieter through the afternoon hours on Thursday. Torcon values of around a two. So low tornado risk with this, uh, with these lines of storms. We so often look at damaging winds uh, from them. But Mike, you don't want to discount that we could get a spin up along that line of storms. Tree system. Yeah, you're like, wait. It's Easter this weekend. We're talking winter weather still in sections of the Northeast. We've got winter weather on deck now, likely in Boston. It's just rain, but temperatures will be cooling off for the end of the week. Take a look. Morning showers Wednesday, Thursday rain behind that system. Things get chillier for our end of the week. Here is the overall system. So we're going to go through the day on Tuesday and into Wednesday, uh, starting off dry. It's late Tuesday, early Wednesday. You can see we've got our first round of rain Wednesday afternoon dry, then late Wednesday into the overnight and early Thursday. Our second system moves in. This one's got more cold air to work with, and this one's going to bring snow to sections of New York, 
and New England, particularly parts of Maine. That's why I think the uh, big show in terms of the snow will be uh, with snow extending even as far southward as the Appalachians there in the state of West Virginia. Uh, very minimal accumulations, though, likely in some of those areas where we are talking about accumulations that are are going to be notable. Maine foot to a foot and a half possible where you see that darkest shade of purple northern New Hampshire and a good chunk of Maine looking at eight to 12 inch totals as we get to our place like Syracuse I think three to five inches a possibility south of Buffalo as well and then a good area where we've got one to three inches all the way back into northwest PA and uh, extreme northwest Massachusetts caribou Maine. Uh, snow showers begin on Thursday afternoon, Thursday night into Friday. We'll continue with the snow. Friday night temperatures drop into the mid 20s. How about a place like Syracuse, New York, where we've got 46 on Thursday. We start things off with rain and wind. Then things will change. Rain snow showers mixed on Thursday night into Friday. We'll wrap things up Friday night with some snow showers. Temperatures remain marginal, though, throughout the period with lows around 30 three degrees, but uh, that's the story in the east. Dr. Nab, we've also got to head west. A lot of action out there. Yeah, let's take you to Los Angeles, Virginia, all the way back to the Great Lakes and especially watching this uh, deeper shade of red. Southern Michigan, Northeast Indiana, Northern Ohio. That's the greatest risk area for the severe weather. So that's where we think there's a higher likelihood that we get in on some strong or severe storms. Right now, just a few, a smattering of warnings, if you will. Uh, one down in the Delmarva Peninsula. We've seen a few thunderstorms here fired up around Spartanburg, South Carolina. Those moving over into Cherokee County at this point. So if you're uh, leaving Spartanburg, headed past the Gaffney Peach, Hi, Peach, you could uh, encounter a few uh, rough spots there on 85 with a few quick downpours. There's that warning I mentioned out over the Delmarva, Accomack and Northampton counties under a severe thunderstorm warning. We'll watch for gusty winds, hail. We've got this storm moving out of Ohio into West Virginia. It's Pleasance, Tyler and Washington counties. This will be north of Parkersburg, a city like Granville or Grandview or St. Mary's. Then southern Michigan, we've got two active warnings. So we've seen these storms uh, crossing over Lake Michigan, now making their way back into uh, land zones. We've got areas around Cadillac under a warning uh, due to that possibility for damaging wind and perhaps some hail. Wexford County here under the warning and then around Muskegon. We've got this storm advancing in. So if you're looking west, things are looking rough. Plenty of lightning strikes out over the lake. Dalton, Eggleston and Laketon are some of the communities in the path of this particular storm. Severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect for portions of uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, getting into the state of Michigan until 10 o'clock local time. I think we'll be watching for more issues during the overnight because take a look. We see those storms really begin to get going as we head towards the middle and late evening. So now by 10 o'clock, things are really active around a Detroit, northern Indiana. But take a look, midnight, Cleveland lighting up, but northwest PA, say around a Butler, uh, we're going to be dealing with some strong storms and heavy rain. 3 o'clock in the morning, Parkersburg, West Virginia, over to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, western Maryland as well. By 6 a.m., Charleston, uh, getting into uh, places like Harrisonburg, Virginia, and those storms continue to edge southeast. We're losing their punch, but still could be kind of rocky into the mid morning. So, Mike, it looks like at least over, I would say, the next 12 to 16 hours could be a really rough yeah. go with some very strong storms. Damaging wind will be the big threat. Yeah. Help by donating just one dollar to Feeding America. Your donation can distribute 10 meals to people facing hunger. With many states sheltering in place and schools closed, field trips are out of the question right now. But there are some ways to keep your kids occupied and learning. Here are some cool virtual field trip ideas. Be